Under the allowance method, there are three methods to estimate bad debt expense. The first method we're going to look at is called the percent of revenue method. The percent of revenue method is also sometimes called the percent of sales method. So if you see percent of sales method, it's the same as percent of revenue method. When you're using the percentage of revenue method to estimate your bad debt expense, you take your current period sales revenue and multiply it by the bad debt percentage. The bad debt percentage will always be given to you in the questions. And um, again, to calculate your bad debt expense for the year, your bad debt expense equals the current period sales revenue times bad debt percentage. The current period sales revenue, make sure you pick the credit sales for the sales revenue unless the question tells you to do otherwise because we know that only credit sales have a chance of bad debts occurring. If there are cash sales, there are no bad debts because you've already collected the cash at the time of the sale. Let's go look at an example in Excel on how to record transactions using the percent of revenue method. Take a minute to read the question by yourself and then we'll go through it together. This question is the same question that's used in your textbook, so you should be able to follow step-by-step step in more detail if you go through the textbook as well. It says Allen's Tutoring Service is a small company that provides tutoring services to college students. ATS started operations on January 1, year one. During year one, ATS has ATS had the following three types of events. First, they recognized 3,750 of service revenue earned on account. Then they collected 2,750 cash from accounts receivable in year one. So they collected 2,750 from this 3,750. And then the third one says ATS recognized uncollectible account expense for uncollectible accounts in the future using the percentage of sales method. The company uses the percentage of revenue method and estimates that 2% of credit sales are uncollectible. So note how they've used percentage of sales, percentage of revenue in the same line, they both mean the same thing. Use a horizontal financial statements model to show how each event affects the balance sheet, income statement, and the statement of cash flows. The first two transactions should be very simple. You have been doing a lot of these transactions um, from chapter two onwards. So let's go ahead and record those. The first transaction says ATS recognized 3,750 of service revenue earned on account. How does this transaction affect the balance sheet? We know that revenue increased by 3,750 and it was earned on account, so accounts receivable increases by 3,750. We also know that what's reported in the balance sheet is the net realizable value of accounts receivable. So what we're going to have is a column under assets called net realizable value of accounts receivable. We know that the net realizable value is calculated by taking your accounts receivable balance and then subtracting the allowance for doubtful accounts. So for this chapter, I'm going to keep track of accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts separately. And then I will show the effect of the net realizable value in the balance sheet. When you keep these accounts separately, it will help you in future and uh, with complex calculations to keep track of what's going on. So let's go back to transaction one. Accounts receivable increases by 3750. So I'm going to put that 3750 as a positive number under accounts receivable. And the description for this is credit sales. You don't need to put the description but I will record that so you see what we're doing. Accounts receivable increases by 3750. Now we know that 
accounts receivable minus allowance for doubtful accounts is equal to net realizable value. So for this transaction, what happened to the net realizable value? If accounts receivable increases by 3750 and nothing happens with the allowance account, your net realizable value will also increase by 3750. So under this column for transaction one, we see that net realizable value increases by 3750. What else happened? We know that revenue increased by $3,750. Revenue has the effect of increasing retained earnings, which is a stockholder's equity item. So under retained earnings, I will have a positive $3,750. That takes care of the balance sheet. Does this affect the income statement? Yes, it does. We earn revenue, so revenue increases by 3750, causing net income to also increase by 3750. Does this affect the statement of cash flows? No, it doesn't. There was no cash exchange, so therefore no statement of cash flows column. Let's look at transaction two. It says ATS collected $2,750 cash from accounts receivable in year one. So how does this affect the balance sheet? Well, we know that we collected cash, so our cash increases. So under assets, I'm going to call, have a column called cash, and my cash increased by 2750 What else happened? Well, my accounts receivable decreased. Now, on my balance sheet here, I have net realizable value, but I know my accounts receivable decreases by collection, which would be a negative $2,750. If my accounts receivable decreases by $2,750, my net realizable value will also decrease by $2,750. So I'm going to put that negative $2,750 under the NRV column in the balance sheet. That takes care of the balance sheet. Does this affect the income statement? No, it doesn't. This is not new revenue that the company earned. This is just collecting the revenue earned in transaction one. So that does not affect the income statement. Does this affect the statement of cash flows? Yes, it does. Our cash increase, therefore our statement of cash flows will show an inflow of 2750 dollars of cash. What type of activity? This is for revenue, so it is an operating activity. Now let's look at the third item, which is the adjusting entry. They want you to recognize uncollectible account expense using the percent of revenue method. When you're using the percentage revenue method to calculate bad debt expense, you take your current period sales revenue multiplied by bad debt percentage. So all these numbers are given here. We'll get to that in a minute. And once you've calculated the bad debt expense to record it, your adjusting entries increasing bad debt expense or doubtful account expense, you know that means the same thing. And then you increase your allowance for doubtful accounts. Let's go ahead and calculate the bad debt expense. Bad debt expense is equal to current period's credit sales. So we know that the sales revenue was 3750 All of it was on account. So that's the credit sales, 3750 And then you multiply that by the percentage of bad debts. They told you in the question that percentage of bad debts was 2%. So you multiply that by 2%. Or if you want a decimal, that's 0.02. And that gives you $75 as your bad debt expense for the period. To record that, you're going to increase your doubtful account expense. So the increasing an expense, how does that affect the balance sheet? We know that expenses have the effect of decreasing retained earnings. So under retained earnings, we're going to decrease $75 because of this expense. What else happens? Well, we know that the allowance for doubtful accounts increase. 
let's go ahead and put this here. So this is the expense. That causes the doubtful accounts to increase by 75. If the allowance for doubtful accounts increase by 75, it affects the net realizable value. Allowance for doubtful accounts are subtracted to calculate the net realizable value. So this 75 causes net realizable value to go down by $75. So in the balance sheet column here, I'm going to decrease the NRV of accounts receivable by 75. Again, I hope that made sense. So go back, re rewind the video and watch it again. The net realizable value is decreased whenever allowance for doubtful accounts increase. That takes care of the balance sheet. Now let's look at the income statement. Did this adjustment affect the income statement? Yes, it did. Our expenses increased by 75, so we're going to have a positive 75 under expenses. Expenses cost net income to decrease, so net income decreased by $75. Does this affect the statement of cash flows? No, it doesn't because the statement of cash flows is only affected whenever cash is received or paid. And in this example, it was just an adjusting entry. We did not have any cash exchanged. That's it for this video. I will continue with another example and more terminology in the next video.